20,000 driverless cars released in America, on America's streets in the next two to four years by 2020-2024. Waymo, a company owned by Google, is set to release driverless cars after working with Jaguar for over a 10-year particular project they're working together. Watch as a father sends his children off in a car being driven by a computer and also watch these seniors get in a car, sit in the back seat while a computer drives them around. Is this our future? It looks like it is. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Welcome, welcome to VFN TV. I'm Greg Lancaster and joining me is John Ramos. Hello. Oh my goodness, man. Driverless cars. cars. Can you imagine it? Yeah, I mean, you know. You don't have to imagine. No, it's coming, huh? It's ha yeah, it's here now. But they're talking about 20,000 of them being released on the streets in America. Is this going to be safe? I mean, can you imagine standing on the side of the road and a car is coming? You're wondering, like, is this a driverless car? Or if it's a driverless? Or is it a teenager with a cell phone? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know, right? You never know. So you have to, like, my goodness, this is, this is some interesting days that are happening, but 20,000 they're talking about being released in the next two years, depending on when you're watching this, it's 2020. And, uh, and you know if you could, if they can release 20,000, it, it'd be a short time before they have 100,000 now. Yeah. So. You know, you think about this too, they've been driving, you know, they've been flying planes under GPS and, you know, they've been yeah, maneuvering drones. missiles that drones. go to certain places. Drones are going certain places. And now the last place domain is the car. Mm. And it's called Waymo. This particular one, it's done by Google, which is the alphabet, but the actual company that they own, uh, the driverless car company, is called Waymo. And this is at CMEC, CMEC talking about how many they're gonna release and when they're gonna release them. Check it out. I'm gonna talk about Alphabet, Google's autonomous project. They've been working on this pretty much the longest out right. in Silicon Valley. Nine years, basically. Now their effort is called Waymo. They've kind of separated it out a little bit. Right. And Jaguar is who they're working with. They've got like, what, is it 20,000? 20, 20,000 of these will them? be hitting the road in the United States starting in 2020. So you got 20,000 of these that'll go into autonomous rideshare programs operated by Waymo between 2020 and 2022. So this is not a small pilot program yeah. in a, a, a suburb of, Arizona, of Phoenix. This is gonna be eventually in the large metropolitan areas around the country. And this is in two years. So well, you'll start to see them in 2020, and then yeah. by 2022, all 20,000 will be out there. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at VFNKB.com. That's VFNKB.com. Get your free copy today. By 2022, all 20,000 will be out there. I mean, this is amazing. Where are we going with yeah. this? And if you're in the city, if you ever live in the city, you know then that. Then you understand. They don't have a driver's license. Most of them don't. Yeah. And if you did, subway, you're stuck in the traffic somewhere. You catch a cab. You catch a subway. And or you walk. It could be safer than some of the cabbies. I know this that is true. When we were in New York, we were going to a particular studio in New York, and we jumped in the cab, and we said, this way. And he went the other way. And we, went, we had to go, oh, it was forever. We finally got there. Well, we made, we it. made it in time. And uh, it was in the, it was in, it was good. It was, it was good, awesome. Very good. But listen, what does it look like? Well, these are the first passengers. I want you to see the first <laughs> passengers in driverless cars. People are putting their children in these cars. And uh, but this is the first passengers in the Waymo car, which when you hear Waymo, understand that's Google. When you hear Alphabet, that's the mother company of all these things. Yeah. And so it's Google's car. And then the Google Maps, remember all these maps, they've been gathering all that data on your car. When your phone is in you in, in your hand and you're driving in the car, they're tracking all that data that going blue down dot the road. Is you. That car that rides around the whole, uh, you know, the Neighborhood. neighborhoods <laughs> and has taken pictures of your house and you're going like, in front yeah. of your house, <laughs> you know, or your saluting flag, or whatever, you're there forever until the next pictures are taking. Uh, this is all Google been, has been doing this, and now they're ready to launch. And uh, I think about this too. I think about, remember the previous president had a program called Cash for Clunkers? Yes. And one of the things that Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and the founder of Tesla, Tesla 
and one of the co-founders of PayPal. He's trying to get a rocket to Mars now and that type of thing. That he said specifically that um, that you know the problem with not being able to lose or have driverless cars was there's too many cars that will last for too many years. Mm. And if we could get those cars off the road, then we could be quicker. So it takes 20 years or so for the life of a car. Or longer. Or longer. We can prove it. You yeah, know, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Jesus can make them sandals go on forever, right. right? It's so ridiculous to waste money on them. Why not have it? Anyway, so 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 Cash for Clunkers gathered a lot of them. As a matter of fact, we don't name the particular mechanic, but John, you were yeah, talking was, to a mechanic. I, I talked to a business owner. Very successful. Very and, successful business yeah. owner who mm-hmm. you know, has an automobile shop, and he told me that they actually struggled severely because of during that period because of that cash for clunkers policy so it took he had no more cars to fix <laughs> yeah it took all that inventory off to right. buy these new cars right. more computerized mm-hmm. more more issues so now you're looking at now in two years depending on when you're watching this 2020 they're going to be able to lose 20,000 that's just one company there's other companies doing that's this right. as well just in case you don't know this mobile i was invented in israel and they purchased microsoft purchased it from israel israel's the one that's blessing us all with this kind of technology mm. be able to do it but this is the first passengers inside the uh, uh, waymo cars and we get a chance to take a look at it let's take a look okay day one of self-driving are you ready <laughs> go oh this is weird <laughs> future. <laughs> yeah, she was like, is there no one driving that car? <laughs> I knew it. I was waiting for it. You certainly never know that there wasn't someone driving this car. <laughs> Yo, car! So Thank you, car. <laughs> yeah, thank you, car. That's so amazing, isn't it? Who would have ever thought this day would happen? And some of you out there right now, you're 15 years old thinking, I wanted to get my driver's license. <laughs> it's over. You may it's never over. have a driver's license the way things are going right now. But if you get a good truck, it could last you through all this driverless this stuff. Is true. But, you know, this is so important because this day was coming. You know, we, we talk about the prophetically. I mean, and think about this was written thousands of years ago on the Isle of Patmos from John, the prophet. He's writing the book of Revelations, and he speaks about the economy. He talks about nothing could be bought or sold unless it comes through this particular economy. Not even cars can actually move in this particular region without them tracking. They're tracking. You're losing autonomy. What would yeah. you say? Uh, your, your autonomy, your yeah. freedom. Right. And that's what it, uh, this, this is what it's all pointing to is that they're right. taking away our individual, you know, rights to freedom so we can get in a car and right. you can go anywhere in the country. Right, but, but they if, know. But if you don't have a car that you can drive, yes. now you, you're restricted. And I got, you know, I see a, a promo from Waymo, but understand this too, you know, as a deputy, we used to go out and serve warrants. People that had warrants, they broke the law, they violated something. Now you're going to get in the car to go to your shopping center and it's going to run a warrant check on you and the car is going to drive you right to jail. <laughs> you're going to pull it right up in the side port and the things are going to open up and the robot's going to come out and said, you're under arrest. Come on in here, right? It's, just, it's amazing. The seatbelt will just keep you strapped in there yeah, right. and get you. Yeah, the seatbelt will come on and it's like, you're under arrest. Like, no, no, you're going to jail. No. It's going to be good in some way, right? In some ways, in some know. ways. There is a promotional from Waymo. We want to hear your thoughts on this. Comment below. Write to us. We'd love to hear from you. Friends at VFNKB.com. We want to always hear your thoughts and, and, and your comments on this. We're moving in a generation where all these prophetic things are coming to pass. But here it is. This is actually the promotional video from Waymo, which is Google's driverless car. Let's check it out. There was one Waymo ride, I believe it was like a Saturday or Sunday morning. We were, I think we were going to a friend's house. And we drove by, a, this is a residential neighborhood. There was a kids, families around. And when I wasn't paying too much attention to the car, I noticed it stopped all of a sudden. I was like, why? A child had run out from be- between some cars onto the road. And the car noticed it and stopped faster than I could have ever reacted. What's surprising is the way that the car sees everything, everything around you. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So. <laughs> I don't have to have teenagers out driving around in a $50,000 piece of equipment that I have to insure and worry about, and worry about that and worry about them. At no point have I felt unsafe in the car or uncertain. I had never wanted to own a car, but I grew up in a place where I was required to have one. It was a required skill for survival. Now I get to live in the world where it's not required. I don't have to put myself at risk. I don't have to put other people at risk. So after work, 
A couple minutes before I leave, I'll usually call my Waymo. I can see exactly when Waymo's going to be coming. I can see the map where they are, so I know when to walk outside and when I'll be good. It was just to see the car doing what it needed to do with no one at the helm. It's just it felt like my, my, my childhood dreams are starting to come true. I don't know about you or not, but I don't know about a car crash, but I have seen computers crash. Yes. I couldn't imagine if all of a sudden, if you'd ever been in traffic like LA or traffic like New York, New York. or traffic on the BQE or going, you know. Over the uh, George Washington Bridge. Or you're or passing somebody, you know, at, you know, 55, 65 miles an hour and two computers are driving yeah, you. Yeah, that's slow. Past, yeah, I on mean, those roads. I mean, how many people would stake their life on your computer right now? That yeah. would your computer will take care of you, you know? I mean, that it would give you oxygen. It's like, this is a big deal. Well, this technology has already proven faulty. I mean, someone actually yes. did. In New Mexico. Yeah, in New it, Mexico, yeah. someone someone got hurt. I, I, I she don't even know. She was riding a bicycle, I believe. And she got ran, hit. Ran, ran, yeah. Ran, yes. And it's still less accidents that actually happen, a lot less that happen with people driving cars. Right. But they, they, some of the statistics they give, they talk about how many people, 40 and above, have impaired vision. <laughs> and they're basically, like anybody wearing glasses, so yeah. they're, they're putting that all in the thing when they're presenting the whole concept. And, and it's like, okay. They don't tell you right. it's reading glasses it's, you need yeah, after it's, 40. It's, it's reading glasses. <laughs> but either way, understand things, technology as we know it is flipping on us. It, you can't stop it. You can't say, you know, I'm not going to, you may say, I'm not going to get a computer, but when you pick up the phone to call somebody <laughs> and you're telling them your information, they're entering into a computer. The question is this, you know, what are you going to do? This is what I call the great digital divide. You know, when the great divide in America, we had to go west and great manifest destiny was establishing the west. There would be no California. There would be no Mexico, uh, uh, Texas, Arizona. New Mexico, Arizona. You know, there would be no uh, Seattle, mm. you know, Washington, and it, without the, the destiny, manifest destiny that took place when we went west of the Mississippi. Well, the consequences of that, it, so there was a price to pay to go west. Many people lost their lives, they had to resettle, they had to be willing to have a vision and direction, and they paid a huge price for us to be able to, 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 to have everything west of the Mississippi. Well, now we're in the great digital divide. You know, as believers, as Christians, we don't, we, we, we're not worried about saving our life. We're worried about making our life meaningful. We have eternal life in Jesus Christ. The question is, what are we going to do with the technology that we've been given? Of course, yeah. Obviously, you know, we talked about being arrested and you have a warrant for your arrest. But what if, what if the government just decided that everybody who has a Facebook who calls himself a Christian immediately, mm -hmm. the next time they get in the car, have them all gathered to one place. It'd be a lot easier to track somebody. I'm not saying Facebook's going to do that. I'm just saying... You know, but think of what you can do before then. Yeah. Because we're going to be in eternity with God. God is real. Uh, his, his presence is real. His son, Jesus Christ, is real. And we have eternal life in him. And now we have an opportunity right now. This, because of you and our partners, all of us working together, you know, our VF and KB tribe, we are broadcasting around the world. It's time for us to take advantage of this technology, use it, you know, be, be, have integrity with it, but to understand that there's never been a time like this in the world to be able to do this. And one particular person said this, and I got, I got to go to break, but uh, it was a comedian. Her name is uh, Shonda Pierce. Is that right? Shonda yeah. Pierce? And somebody was talking to her about, she given three different attributes to responses to struggles. And as one was about, if you mourn for longer than five years, five years over somebody's loss of life, mm. You know, you need to go see a doctor that because, you know, you could help you, maybe some counseling, maybe you can talk it with the doctor, talk through it and that will help you. Another is, is maybe, you know, you can get a group communication and you talk about it as a group or if it has to be, and it may not have to be, but if you have to, you may have to get some medication to help you. So this lady comes up to her and she says, I don't think you should talk like that. And she's a comedian, so she says, I don't think you should say that. And so Shonda says, what are you talking about? It's, it's people's faith. You're, gonna, you should, you're messing with people's faith. And she says, honey, if you'll take those glasses off and drive home, I'll listen to you. But right now you have the glasses on. <laughs> you know, it's technology. Glasses are technology. The question is, what are we doing with the technology that we've been given? And I think about this. I think about what Elon Musk said. If you want a copy of the message on the digital divide, write to us at friends at vfnkb.com or go to vfnkb.com and let us know the details and we'll try to get that to you. Uh, for your gift of any size. And also look at this. This is what was said about in TechCrunch by Elon Musk uh, talking about artificial intelligence that's going on right here. But he said specifically, he says, I think we should be very careful. And this is a guy who's been invented this, all this technology. He's the one going to he Mars He sent the rocket into space. Yeah. And he's saying this, and we saw him at the governor's gathering saying this. He says, I think we should be very careful about artificial intelligence. If we had to guess, What's our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. 
So we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some regulatory oversight. Now this is, he's talking about regulatory it's oversight. The business owner. <laughs> yeah, that he, stuff that he does. Maybe at the national or international level, just to make sure that we don't do something that's very, very foolish. Listen to this. He said, with artificial intelligence, we're summonsing a demon. Mm. Because you think about it, it's at the mercy of whoever's running this intelligence. Think about that. He said, with artificial, that's what AI stands for. With artificial intelligence, we are summonsing a demon. And he says, and this is one that's invented a lot of this. He says, uh, and he's a supporter of it, but he's saying, listen, we need to be over it, and it and over us. He says, we know those stories, this is what he talks about. He says, we know those stories uh, where there's this guy with this pent- pentagram and this holy water, and he's like, yeah. Uh, he's sure he can control this demon, but it never works out. Yeah. You and know? we don't have to go too far to really see that. MIT just did a study where they were teaching this AI, this robot, they call him Norman, and fed it nothing but negative images from the internet. Right. And um, it, it just did evil things. It just said, you know, it looked yeah. at, they showed some pictures of it, and it just kept thinking of some evil things. Yeah, we're about to go to break. We've got some success secrets coming up. We want to hear what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, technology is coming, but we have to realize the vulnerability in this that even though it can help you, you need to still be over it. Don't just give up your whole life. And that's why VFNKB connecting with us, being a part of the community is important because we're gonna, we're gonna harness it, but we're not gonna be, let it be over us. You, know, right. we're gonna, you have to use it, don't let it use you. Mm-hmm. Don't let it manage your life and present its vision over you. You have a vision over your life. It's not supposed to make your life easier. It's supposed to make your life more meaningful. You can do more. And the, the second you sit back and do nothing, that's exactly what the, the evil users of that kind of stuff would want you to do. Because there's people out there right now that are saying about this technology, people that formerly reportedly worked at Google, that's created a religion around you know, creating AI, artificial yeah. intelligence, that people can pray to, talk to, and it answers their questions. Well, how many people right now just go, hey, Google, or hey, hey Siri, Siri, or you know, we ask Alexa. Our, Alexa, and there's different ones like that. Um, Hey, uh, Walmart, is that? No, Amazon, no, no, that's right, no, Amazon, no. whatever their thing is. And so, <laughs> you're, know, so you're looking at, you know, these, these are, these are, we're moving into this time, which means our days are limited to make the most impact. We have this technology, we can reach everywhere, we can do everything. Imagine this, like you push a button, you say, all right, everybody in your church comes together because you pushed a button and it just drives them all to church. It's like, oh, I didn't have time. No, I saw your car, you, were, you, should, have been, you should have been here in church. Anyway, so, so you know, everything that's hidden is going to be made known. Everything that's whispered in secret, God shed shadow from the rooftops. It's time to get real. One thing that we, we've done, we've shared our testimonies to let everybody know that uh, we're not righteous. Only we have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you know, that we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our life that every one of us needs the grace of God. We need the forgiveness of God, and we still need the grace and the mercy of God every single day. And if you haven't made that decision yet, if you're scared about your life being revealed and you're trying to hide out, it's already revealed to God. It's time to be able to say, you know what? I need Jesus. Yeah, I'm not perfect. God, I, I want you to be the, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Listen, we shared our testimonies, how we did it, and about our lives at meetmyfather, meetmyfather.org. You can find out how we made Jesus Christ, the Lord of our life, meeting our Father, Father God. It's just, it's a beautiful thing, and, uh, and you, you'll be empowered how to make that very same decision. But listen, comment below. We want to hear what your thoughts about this Waymo, Google's driverless car. What do you think about what Elon Musk said? We want to hear your comments. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.